Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds in the studio. It's Tuesday. We don't even, it hadn't even been in a week since the uh, world champions for baseball were declared. And now we've already got some movers and shakers happening, don't we? Yeah, we do. You have to understand that uh, baseball free agents could declare themselves the day after the World Series, but they couldn't sign or negotiate with any teams until yesterday, five days after the series. That didn't happen right away. The talking is certainly going on. Shoei Otani is the, the big prize in here and where he's going to end up. Who knows? The Cardinals did make a trade. Now, that's not a big-name trade, but they had a deal with the Seattle Mariners in which they picked up a young pitcher named Riley O'Brien. He's a a 6'4 kid who is from the West Coast, from the state of Washington. And the Cardinals got him, and it has to be a trade because he's not eligible for free agency. In the minor leagues last year, he was Pacific Coast Conference All-Star with the Seattle Rainiers and struck out 86 batters in 55 innings. His record was below 500, but that speaks for itself. This guy's a flamethrower, and that's what the Cardinals needed. So they do get him. What the compensation is remains to be announced, but that'll be found out shortly. Uh, this kid this kid is the grandson of Johnny O'Brien. Very few, if any, remember Johnny, but Johnny and his twin brother, Eddie, were big stars and college basketball and Major League Baseball uh, many, many years ago. But that's the legacy this kid has. So Johnny, or I beg your pardon, Riley O'Brien joins the Cardinals. I'll tell you right now, if the Cardinals don't pick up anybody other than pitching, I think they're going to be riots in that city. (laughs) So they better just keep on doing that, which is good to hear. I think they will. At least it's something towards the future and not someone that's on the other side of the climb. Ned, We've got uh, winter baseball meetings taking place between the owners. When's that happen? That happens a month from now. They go to Nashville, Tennessee to have the meetings this year, and they'll run from December 4th through the 7th. That's where a lot of deals are made, Mike, and a lot of free agents. The negotiations become a little bit more intense, but it's also part of that owner's meeting is when they put together the Rule 5 draft, and that's rather complicated to get into, but... You take your 40-player roster, and those players aren't in the aren't involved in it. But anybody else can be picked up by somebody else in a Rule Five. It, it's it's kind of an interesting second draft, and you do get some pretty good players. Springfield Cardinals had a number of Rule Five draftees on their team this year, so we'll see what happens in the offseason. But that's still a month from now when they'll do the real wheeling and dealing. So last night, Monday night football game, I'm in. I'm in just fantasy football hell right now, Ned. I got a record of three and six going into that game. I was winning, but his running back was yet to play, and that was Brees Hall from the Jets, and he scored enough points to beat me. So it has just been an atrocious year for my fantasy. Anytime you're fooling around with the free agents and the players in fantasy football, you're going to run into circumstances like that because you don't know who's playing in the game last night. The Los Angeles Chargers came into New York and just blasted the New York Jets. 27-7, or 6, I beg your pardon, 27-6 was the final score. Austin Eckler had a couple of touchdowns, but the key was the defense. The Chargers defense sacked Chris Wilson to the Jets eight times last night. You don't have a whole lot of times. That's kind of a Kansas City Chiefs disruption, except they're getting to the QB. Eight sacks, you're not going anywhere, and the Jets aren't either. There is some hint, some hint that Aaron Rodgers may come back this season. I would be astounded if that happened, but hey, he says it is possible. Nonetheless, 27-6, the Chargers beat the Jets last night. And again, I lost in fantasy football. (laughs) But uh, hey, I can still make the playoffs. There's at least, what, one, two, three, four, five games left. It's possible. College basketball is underway. Had some great games last night. Really did have some superior games. Uh, Springfield came out 50-50. The Bears, playing in Morgantown, West Virginia, seemingly had a great chance, and I, and I will kind of, I'll confirm this by telling you, the Bears have a good team. They did lose the game to the Mountaineers, 67-59. The Bears lost the game in the first half, and I'll tell you how that happened. Missouri State had the lead at halftime over West Virginia, uh, 30-24. to That's a six-point lead. But, Mike, West Virginia could not throw the ball in the ocean in the first half. They (laughs) took 32 shots and made four of them. That is 12% shooting. I told the guys I was with, "Uh uh-oh, this isn't good. What do you mean it's not good? Bears have the lead. 
we should be up by way more than that because this team's going to come out firing. And they did. West Virginia in the second half shot 58%, couldn't miss, and outscored the Bears down the stretch. Missouri State had their chances. They were down 61-59 to in the closing minute of the game and went scoreless after that. So the final is 67-59. The Bears lose to the Mountaineers, play again next Monday night, and they play here in town, and they play Oral Roberts. And ORU, folks, was a Cinderella team in the NCAA tournament last year, made a big name for themselves and played very well. That will be tough. Now, the Lady Bears, this is, this is pretty rare. They led from the opening tip-off to the final buzzer. Never fell behind. Never played Arkansas Little Rock. Close game, 52-47, to 47, but that never happens on the road. So a big win for the Lady Bears, and uh, they're, they're going to be tough. They'll be a good team. Yeah, they are. Any uh, surprises outside of the area? Oh, there were some. Yeah, I think the, the biggest one was in women's basketball, where the number one team in America, LSU, got knocked off. <laughs> They're playing out in Las Vegas, and Colorado beat them by a score of 92 to 78. And for LSU to lose like that, that is huge. Your guys, Kansas State, also played out in Las Vegas, played Southern Cal last night. Hey, Mike, Southern Cal is a tremendous team. They're number 21 in America, and they beat K-State by a score of 82 to 69. Missouri won easily. You knew they would over Arkansas Pine Bluff. KU played North Carolina Central and walloped them. Duke a big winner over Dartmouth out of the Ivy League. So uh, in terms of surprises, no, not that many. One other win, Michigan State lost to James Madison. This is men's game at Lansing, East Lansing, Michigan. That doesn't happen very often. And uh, hey, let me tell you, James Madison's Dukes are a pretty good basketball team. Lots of interesting things are going to happen this year. Yep. All right. Now back to college football. Mizzou, they got a test this weekend, don't they? They play Tennessee. The Tennessee Volunteers play them at Faroe Field in Columbia. And we'll find out tonight where the Tigers are ranked in the bowl rankings. They're the big ones. They were number 12 last week. They lost, they being the Tigers, lost to Georgia. Will that plummet them a whole lot in the bowl rankings? I don't think so. I think they'll only drop about maybe two points somewhere along the line and maybe go to 14th. They're still in the in the mix, so to speak, for a really top bowl game. And I think they beat Tennessee. They have Florida after that at home and then have Arkansas on the road to end the season. So a ways to go yet, but the Tennessee game will be a big one for them. Okay, State Wildcats back at home to face Baylor. Definitely need a win after that very close loss to Texas last weekend. And then we got the K-State KU matchup (laughs) coming up. That's going to be something because those two teams really are going back and forth coming into the top 25, going out, coming in, going out. So we'll see what happens down the road. Ned, you have a great day, and I will see you manana.